Today we're making a valet tray with hidden wireless charging in a secret drawer. I love figuring out the hidden drawer on the nightstand I just built. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Woo! Oh, it's not locking. And today I'm scaling things down and I'm gonna make a locking mechanism that takes two moves to get it open. This one's gonna be a lot of fun and hard. I'm starting my way from the inside and working my way outward since I'm not exactly sure how everything will fit together. And the exterior and secret drawer will be walnut, but I'm using poplar for some of the inner parts, mainly because I didn't have wide enough walnut pieces for it. And while I'm milling the poplar to size, let's take a quick look at the design of the valet tray. Now, it's made specifically for my everyday carry, and it has a spot for my phone, my knife, my wallet, and a miscellaneous tray. Now the left side has a wireless charger, and the hidden drawer is going to be on the opposite side, and it'll have a special locking feature. All right, we're starting with the wireless charging portion of the valet tray, and this is what we got here. The wireless charger is gonna go right in there into it, and I'm gonna cut that little recess out on the CNC and also some places for the wires to go and how to mount this. I'll have a link below to this and all the other stuff I'm using down below in the description, so if you wanna check that out. But I'm gonna take some measurements, and then we can go to the CNC and get it started. I used the measurements to draw up a cutting path to perfectly fit the charger and the cords. Now the easel software from Inventables makes it a snap to do these layouts and I was cutting them on my X-Carve CNC in just a matter of minutes. And maybe I went a little too fast. All right guys, I just stopped the carve because I am ahead of schedule. Uh, and that is the schedule of making mistakes. So <laughs> if you look down at the piece, uh, it started carving and I thought, why did the wire chase not go all the way to the edge? And that's because I centered the design. I'm used to carving things in the center of a design. This needs to be offset and cut exact. I'm gonna reset it up. We're gonna have some little marks in here to remind me that I made a mistake. Uh, and then I'm gonna execute it the right way. Mistakes were made early. The CNC's are great machines, but they're only as smart as the operator. I relocated the design and I set up the workpiece correctly, and it made short work of cutting out the recesses for the charger and wires. And now that I knew the final size of that interior piece, I could start milling up the walnut for the exterior of the box. The trim pieces came out great and they fit perfectly flush when I have the bottom quarter inch panel as well as the little insert there. So I'm gonna miter those around. But what I just realized is that I need to go ahead and pour the epoxy so that it will be dry tomorrow when I go to work. But I'm actually gonna pour two, two, two different colors and see which one I like best. I cut down some leftover melamine to make the forms. It's nothing fancy here, just a bottom piece and some sides with a divider that's tall enough to keep the epoxy all in place. Just to make sure that it doesn't stick, the epoxy doesn't stick, I'm gonna put some paste wax on there before just to help it release because it's gonna be a lot of surface area. So I'm gonna bust into this and it smells delightfully toxic, but it smells like my grandfather. Not that my grandfather was toxic, but you know what I'm saying. So I'm just gonna put it on here and then basically buff it right off. The epoxy pour is only going to be about an eighth of an inch thick and there will be almost no force on the mold. So I decided to use hot glue and oversize the sheets so that I could cut off the rough edges to get to my final size. I jumped into the pour using some Maker Epoxy by my friend Jess Crow in Total Boat. And I used that nice light blue color and some orange for another option, Go Vols. Now the next day I jumped into making the pieces that would hold the secret drawer and define the right side of the valet box. I used some of the leftover pieces from the charging side and I cut them down to size. And I marked the middle of the small parts and I ran a quarter inch groove down each one. Now this is gonna hold a couple runners attached to the secret drawer and let it slide in and out. These turned out really well. The little strip that I'm gonna use, which was just an off cut of the walnut, fits nicely and slides in there. So I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna all go together, but I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the miters to go around the base that's gonna hide the secret drawer, and it's also gonna be the face of the drawer front. So let's see how that looks. 
I made all the cuts on the miter saw and I used a sacrificial back piece taped to the fence for clean cuts. I did a lot of test fitting and cutting to get everything just right. And then I glued the trim around the charging section and the secret drawer guides. And that my friends is what a glue up should go like. Next, I moved over to the other half of the walnut board that I milled earlier. I made a few quick cuts on the table saw and miter saw to get all of my parts. Now I could move on to the rest of the valet tray. All these pieces are going to be for the top frame. So I've got a little mitered frame right here. That's going to be the outside. I'm going to go ahead and glue that up here in a second and then pull out the epoxy and start fitting it all together. The glue up of the top frame was super fast and I just held it together with blue tape. And now that I had a few things drying, I could cut down one of the walnut pieces and carve a monogram on it. Because monograms. I jumped back over to the X-carve and I let it do its thing with a 60 degree V-bit. And it took less than a minute to carve this out and it gives me a customized look for the tray. And then I could fit the inner dividers and pour some epoxy into the monogram. And once the base was dry, I cleaned up the joints and glue squeezed out with a chisel. Now this is a Wood River socket chisel from Woodcraft. I love these chisels and the wooden handle feels great in your hand. Now you can get these and thousands of other woodworking tools and supplies from Woodcraft, including all the jet machinery that I've been using to mill up the wood. Now the planer, joiner, and bandsaw were a great combo to get me these walnut parts. And I'll be busting out the drum sander a little later. Now I've got links below to all these tools and thanks to Jet and Woodcraft for being amazing sponsors of my channel. And next I cut the bottom for the valet tray from a quarter inch walnut plywood panel. This little panel is going to cover the entire bottom and conceal any evidence of the secret drawer from underneath. I right, got the bottom piece cut and that fits in nicely. So now we can see how much room we actually have to work with for the drawer. I am a little worried, a lot worried, honestly, uh, because the room to fit this little spring mechanism for the lock is going to be like a quarter of an inch, actually even less than that. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned, but I think we can make it work. Let's see. Now this tiny little drawer was another exercise in miter joints. And I didn't do anything fancy for the bottom. I literally just sandwiched it between the pieces and secured it with glue. All right, the box is dry. The quick set glue is great. And it is a nice fit. Check this out. Uh, but <laughs> I did have a change of plans because uh, I initially said I was gonna do a half inch and I was gonna do the spring underneath. But th it, what I realized was that the drawer would literally be a quarter inch deep. So now I have to make the spring mechanism on the back. So I'm kind of turning a little bit on that, but I think I've got an idea. I'm gonna grab some brass here after I put these on and we'll start jumping into figuring out the spring. I cut the runners on the table saw and before fitting them, I also secured the bottom panel to the base. Now that way I could know how high the drawer will sit on top of that panel. But what I should have done is put a playing card or some type of shim underneath the drawer to lift it off the bottom. And making it flush with the bottom panel caused me a lot of adjustments later so that I could make it slide smoothly without rubbing. Now while those are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the spring. I got some brass. This is uh, actually 22 gauge brass. So I'm gonna lay out a little like three inch by half inch piece, cut it out, and I've never worked with this. So I'm gonna see how it works and how much I can bend it because for the idea I need, I need a little hook in it to come back. I hammered the brass flat and then I used a combination of the hammer again and some pliers to put a small hook on the end. This brass worked really well. I was able to flatten it out as well as get this little hook. And I'll show you why I did it here. I'll give you a little close up of this, of what it looks like. Uh, but the idea is that I'm gonna have the drawer, I'm gonna have a little piece I'm gonna put on the back so that uh, it will have a little place to catch on. So the drawer will come in, catch on to the spring, and then I can hit the spring from above, the release, and it'll shoot the drawer out. That's the idea at least. But now I need to shape this piece as well as the base and find out the angle of the spring. I'm thinking this is gonna work though. I used the brass hook to estimate how big the cutout needed to be on the small locking piece and then I started chiseling away. I didn't like my first attempt so I switched to the other side of the strip and it turned out much better. 
when the brass hook fit well in the cutout. I stopped and then I chamfered the other side and cut it to size. Now I can position the brass piece on the charging side and put the drawer in place to figure out the angle I needed to mount the brass at. After I got that, I chiseled out the spot for the release and glued on the locking strip to the drawer. I switched back to the epoxy and I had some issues with the pores. On the first one, I didn't mix the maker epoxy per the directions and it didn't cure hard like it would have if I had have mixed it for five minutes versus two. And on the repour, it cured hard, but I realized they didn't use nearly enough pigment to actually hide my secret drawer. Yes. You can see my hand right through it. So I mixed a third batch, and this time I bailed on the orange because I didn't think it would be dark enough, and we probably won't have a football season anyway. So we're gonna demold this and see what these look like. I can already tell this is way darker. Oh man. That is super, super dark. I think that is, that is completely opaque. Yes. All right, this is going to work. You just have to dump a ton of pigment in uh, if you don't wanna be able to see through it at only an eighth of an inch thick. I cut the epoxy sheets down to a bit larger than the box. And if you thought my epoxy struggles were over, you're wrong. I mean, seriously, I might just turn this into a fail channel. But after I settled down a little bit, I was able to glue the little piece back after sanding it down and putting some epoxy on it. Uh, but let me know down in the comments, are your projects as big of a train wreck as this one has been for me so far? Now before attaching the epoxy, I needed to get the brass release and drawer spring squared away. All right, this drawer is not quite attached to the front yet, so I'm gonna butt it up against the front and then slide the spring in and see where it catches, which is basically right there at the end. Just do a little hole here and drill it in place. Now the release wasn't engaging at first. Ooh, does not lock. But after a few adjustments, I got it working. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, I've got the little brass catch in there adjusted where I think it's gonna be just right. And uh, I'm gonna grab a spring. This is what I think I'm gonna use. I'm not gonna quite attach it yet, but let's put it in here just uh, to give it a little pressure and see if it locks. <laughs> yes, it locks. Now, locking is the easy part. Let's see if it unlocks. So this will, you'll, you'll see more about the unlocking in a minute, but hopefully if I press down on this, it should just pop out. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay, perfect. And before I mounted it, I saw that the drawer was racking because the spring wasn't centered. So I grabbed a few different springs from the assorted pack that I bought and I tested them out using one on each side. Now, some of these would be great for launching the drawer into lower orbit. <laughs> but I found a couple that were less aggressive. And I didn't want to bury them too deep and reduce the spring power. So I hot glued them in some shallow holes that I drilled on the base. And with a few adjustments and some wax runners, this will be exactly the right amount of force. <laughs> Perfect. I locked the drawer in tension and then I glued on the false drawer front to complete it. And while it was drying, I prepped the epoxy sheet, which I went for the bright blue as you can see here. Now the pour wasn't exactly level, so I ran it through the drum sander to get it consistently flat and then I finished sanded it up to 220 grit after that. All right, at this point, now I can attach the epoxy top. This thing's all ready to go, and then we'll sand everything flush and attach all the top pieces. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that the wireless charger works. I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. I've got a little recess in here. So I'm gonna put this on top, and there's a little piece underneath that's actually holding it up against the top. So, moment of truth. <laughs> All right, fast charging, perfect, excellent, yes. All right, the wireless charging is gonna work, uh, so now I feel comfortable attaching the epoxy top, and I'm going to do that with epoxy. I used a slow setting epoxy to glue the blue top onto the wood, and I made sure to leave it a little proud around every side so that I could sand it back flush. Now, after a night in the clamps, we were in business. There was a little rubbing on the drawer as it opened, so I cleaned it up with a card scraper to hit any high spots. 
Then I sanded the epoxy flush with the sides, and I also scraped down the monogram while I was at it. I attached the top frame with CA glue, since it would cure fast and it's going to let me continue to work and not have to wait overnight. After 15 minutes in the clamps, I flushed up all the sides using a block plane. And as soon as I saw wood and epoxy come off together, I knew I was flush. I got everything tuned up and flush it is looking good. Final sanding will take care of the rest of that. So now I'm gonna put in the monogram and the pieces, or at least two of them. Then we can work on the release mechanism, which is the final part of the project. I used a right angle square to attach the monogram and dividers to match the layout that I designed. But I left the horizontal divider loose since it's literally the key to the secret drawer. All right, this last part is gonna require substantial precision. I'm basically gonna be taking this little piece and putting some nails in it and drilling holes through the epoxy. So uh, one side of the nail will be longer and you pull it up, flip it around, and when you push it down, it'll release the drawer. I got this idea from Dustin Pinner. He had a cool release on his secret drawer that did just this. So I'm gonna try it and we'll see if it works, but I think we can do it. I practiced getting these holes right by hand and it was a mess to line up. So I made a jig to help me out. And it fits exactly in the large opening and it has a groove right where I want the divider to go. I drilled holes through the jig on each end of the divider and I used those holes to guide my handheld drill bit through the epoxy. Then I removed the jig and put the divider in there and drilled holes halfway through the piece to hold the pins. If I'm being completely honest, I was totally impressed with this solution. I feel like I negated at least one, maybe two of my earlier screw ups with this jig. And I took some finished nails and I cut them down on my vise with a hacksaw to make the pins for the divider. After cleaning them up with a file, I was ready to do a test fit. All right, I'm gonna put the drawer back in here. All right, now we're gonna go to the locked position first. And well, we're just gonna see if this fits, first of all. I should have been sitting at this seat the whole time. <laughs> this is much better. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, <laughs> all right. Oh, it's a little tilted. Oh, dang it. It doesn't look perfect, but we're not perfect. Now, I'm going to flip this around. Here's the long edge, the long one. And when I push it down, it should open. It should open. <laughs> oh, I it's not long enough. The pin is not long enough. All right, I'm gonna make the pin longer uh, and then we're gonna make it work. Just a little bit longer. <laughs> Hopefully it's not still too short. All right, let's put this in here and here we go. <laughs> ah, yes. Oh, okay, let's push down. So then to, to set it back, you gotta put it in there and then I should be able to close this. Oh my gosh, that's hitting. <laughs> it's hitting the drawer bottom. All right, I, I could do that. All right, well, I will, I'll put something on the spacer, but this is working. That we're, this is it. We're gonna call this uh, a success. I'm gonna build up the spring a little bit so that this can hit it without hitting the drawer bottom. But, and I'll probably smooth this out a little bit so it shoots out a little bit further because it's way cooler if it shoots further. I added a couple little pieces of wood to the back of the release to build it up higher and it worked out great. And then I did some final sanding and applied finish. The epoxy and walnut really came to life together and I'm loving the look. And this was really a fun project to work through a release mechanism and locking feature that I designed on the fly. The double move key feature also means you can't just unlock it by mistake, poking around for a button. And now I have a valet tray fit for Jason Bourne. Hey, if you want to check out more videos with hidden features, I got to play this queued up for you right there. Let me know down below in the comments, what are some things that I should build? I'm looking for ideas on my next hidden project. I want to give a big thank you to all the folks that have joined the Builders Club and I'll catch you guys on the next video.